Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Seminars. We're here with Melanie Who Talks, number 24, with Christina Melanie Smallhorn from Louisiana. Millennial Who Talks, we are changing lives, inspiring others with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the country. If you're watching this today and you get inspired, you learn a little something, please tag a friend, share it. And if you want to subscribe to the show, all you have to do is type Melanie Who in the comments. I have a little messenger bot, which will contact you. You say, yes, I promise we will only let you know when we're doing the show. Nothing else. I don't sell anything. I'm not going to call you about coaching or anything. So let's get started with Christina. First of all, Christina, thank you so much for being on today and taking time out of your busy day and whispering real estate to people from across the country. Uh, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you, Jamie. And I really appreciate you having me on your show. And I just love talking about what I've been doing with the video this year. So I was excited to be here. It's been an exciting year. So let's let's start in the beginning of when you got started in real estate. Like what what prompted you to get into real estate? What did you like about it? And you know, what was that initial I had a, experience like? I had a bad experience buying a house. And then I found out how much that guy was selling and it bothered me and I'm like if that guy can do it I can do it and I'm gonna do it ten times better than that guy because that guy is not what real estate needs to be about so I was like I'm gonna change the world <laughs> I'm gonna set the world on fire with real estate <laughs> yeah. and that's how I got started I would say me too because that's exact almost exactly the same story for me that's mm -hmm. that's that, so many agents I talk to it's like well I had a bad experience and this guy was successful and I said I could do it better and the rest is history, right? Yep, absolutely. So, so tell us then about, about your first year. What was that like? Like what were some of the challenges you faced? Tell us where you're I, from and what that what a parish actually is, because a lot of us are confused as far as that. Well, I'm originally from Plymouth, Massachusetts, but I've made my way over the years and now I'm in um, an area called Ascension Parish, which is outside of Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge Parish. And a parish is a county. Um, I'm Only in Louisiana do we have parishes, but right. they, it has to do with the French and that's how it was set up. So, you know, why change it to a county when it's been a parish all this time? Right. <laughs> so it's a parish and that's where I live. Just this little area called Ascension Parish. And that's where I sell mostly. Okay. So then in your first year, did you just go gangbusters right off the bat or what's, tell us, you know, was the struggle I real? In 2007, you know, okay. like, do you remember 2007? Yeah, you could, you were printing paper in 2007, basically printing your own money. Well, there, well and, and not only that, the market was like, bleh. But uh, the first six months I was there, I was pretty excited because I was like, I sold over a million in this tiny town where the market is terrible, you know? And um, and then it just went up from there. You know, um, I've had some good years. I've had some bad years. And uh, before I started into, into the video aspect of it, I was having a bad year. And uh, it only takes one client or one person to break your spirit to the point of like, I don't know if I should be doing this anymore. But then I was like, no, I'm a fighter. I'm going to do this and I'm going to change everything. So I basically flushed down everything I ever knew and how I did business and, and went head first, dive, dove deep into um, doing video for YouTube and, and for Facebook. And it's been working out for me. So when you talk about you forgot about everything you knew, what what did you do in the beginning? Was it traditional like? Very traditional. I work for a very small brokerage. Um, so, you know, everything was very traditional, you know, make those phone calls, uh, you know, go and do open houses, um, you know. And for me uh, to sit at an open house for four hours and hopefully get three people to come in, um, it's just it wasn't it wasn't working for me anymore. And people were really focusing on buying homes through the Internet. And I kept trying to piece together how that to make that work. And I, you know, I just it was difficult for me to put my mind around it. But then when I, you know, like I had that period of just yuck year that that's when I said, you know what, I'm really going to figure this out. And I and I really feel like I have, you know, I, I've learned a lot about Facebook advertising. I started doing the videos originally just on Facebook. And then, um, do you know, the lighter side of real estate? Have you ever heard of that little site? Oh, yeah. uh, 
So I did a, my first like funny type style video about real estate. Um, and they said, well, can you put it in a YouTube link so we can share it on our, on our page? And I'm like, well, sure. So then I uploaded it to YouTube and I was like, well, what's with this YouTube thing? So then I started getting into it more and then, like I started listening more and, and then it's been actually growing quite, quite well, <laughs> especially in the last four months. And it's really helped uh, my SEO on my website. And, um, you know, I, I just, I'm so glad that I got into it and I'm like, I really enjoy uh, putting all this together for everybody. So initially when you were getting started, cause initially there's a lot of people that'll be watching this right now. And they're like, you know what? I, I want to, I've wanted to for the last month, six months, year, two years, five years, I've wanted to get into video. You know, what were some of the fears that you had initially? Or were you just like, you know what, I'm just going to do this. You started hitting, you know, record and then the rest is history. Like what, what were the challenges in the beginning? Well, I think um, I, when I originally had started, I, I, there wasn't any really anybody else doing this in the area and the few that were doing it, I was like, I can, I can do this. I mean, if they can do it and it looks like that and they make mistakes, I can do it too, you know, but I want to do it better. So I, you know, I kind of just went from there. My first video, I'm sitting there cause I was nervous and no one, I don't even think anybody's watched it. I think on YouTube, it probably has seven views and I think five of them are mine, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting there holding a piece of paper, reading the statistics of the schools here in the area because we have really good schools. And so I was like, well, people will want to know that. And so I just, I read the statistics. The sound quality is terrible. I have my cell phone. I'm doing it with my cell phone. And I'm like this, you know, reading these statistics. But yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere. I mean, and if, if you're nervous about it, just put it on YouTube. Don't tag it. Don't even t barely title it. No one will ever watch it. But at least you can see yourself and get more comfortable. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. You, and a good friend of mine always says, you don't have to be good to start, but you have to be, you have to start to be good or Absolutely. be great, right? <laughs> so it's, it's just a matter of every time just focusing on progress rather than perfection, right? Every time you, like you said, you watch it, you learn a little bit, man, I said this, I shouldn't have said that, I could do this better, right? I mean, how, how did you then incrementally like get better over time? I know like many of us, you're self-taught, right? I mean, you just kind of went on. YouTube is the university of technology at this point. Right, and, and that's, uh, what, that's what I was gonna say is that everything I learned, I learned from YouTube and I followed um, a guy named Miles Beckler. That's how I learned how to do um, Facebook advertising. And this guy like walked you through step by step. He had a screen up and he showed you each thing. So I was like, I created my first ad on Facebook and now I can prospect leads, you know? <laughs> And then um, I fall, you know, then for the motivation part, I follow a, a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk who doesn't. I mean, <laughs> so every time that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do this today, I just turn on, turn on Gary and he's very blunt. Yeah. <laughs> and he's very in your face and he's like, get out of bed, basically. I will not, I will censor what he would normally would say. But, um, you know, for the motivation part, that's, I mean, that was G uh, Gary. And then anytime I needed to learn something about video, I have a, I had at the time I was using um, iMovie. So any, there's a thousand tutorials on anything that you want to possibly learn how to do for iMovie on YouTube. And um, I found that the, the little kids knew the best. So I ended up following this kid from Ireland. And he really helped me out. You know, I was like, every time I'm like, oh, thanks, kid. I really appreciate it. Because <laughs> he talked to me like, I, you know, like a kindergartner, you know, like I could understand. He wasn't talking outside the realm of, you know, he said, click here. You know, I didn't know what that button was. I don't think he knew the name either, but I knew what that picture was. So just click there. <laughs> Do you remember the camera name? Do you remember the kid's name or no? I, I don't. I don't. He actually quit posting videos over uh, a year ago and it was like he had done this for a series and you know he never even answered any of my comments but i i ended up putting it on there anyway <laughs> and um then you know it's just gotten progressively better but every you know not every video i do is a gem i mean and you know sometimes because of the the amount i put out there's videos i wish i could have done better but i'm um, like you said every time i put one up it gets better and better and better. I learned something more and how 
to get those videos better on YouTube, better for SEO, better for, um, you know, sharing better for my website. So, um, it's, it's definitely a learning process. You can't do it all in one night, but if you just take little nuggets each time, then you'll do better. So let's start for, for, for folks who are getting started and want to kind of get an echo effect a little bit. Want to turn oh. on the, um, for the folks who are just getting started, like where would I get started with equipment? And then like, what's your process like? Do you do a video and then you put it on Facebook and YouTube? And do you have a blog or like what's what's the system like there with each video or is it different? Because I know you have funny videos, but then you also have items of value, stuff like people can help, you know, sellers and buyers would, would want to know about. Take a tip Tuesday. Is that what it's called? Yeah, take, take it's take a tip Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, I do this <laughs> I do this little thing. Um I do two I do two videos consistently a week. On every Tuesday, I do a tip about buying and selling homes. And um, that goes on my website with a blog. Uh, and I make sure that those that video is captioned because it helps with your SEO. And if you want to caption your videos, there's a um, website called RevRev.com. And it's a dollar a minute. So you just upload your video to Rev and they will caption it all. Even with the little, they'll even put in, you know, parentheses, you know, little uh, birds chirping when they have certain music and everything. So it's, it's a really good site and it's too inexpensive not to do it. And it does help with your Google ranking. So, okay. you know, Red, caption rev.com. Rev okay. Cause you, I cheap. know you could also, you could also do it on Facebook and YouTube if you're uploading the video, right? Cause right. I've done Our that. Caption thing is garbage in comparison yeah. to you, you have to go in and actually, but if you're on a budget, you know, there's two options. You can pay somebody, which is, you know, sometimes saving yourself the time and the aggravation is worth it. But if you have the time and you want to, yeah, it's not great. But you have to go in and probably edit 30% of it for me, especially because I talk so fast. And I would imagine for you, it'd be the same. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't really work as well with the Facebook and YouTube. So rev.com. Yeah, rev.com, it's a dollar a minute. And for that same video, you can use the same file for Facebook and YouTube. So, you know, so you for two, basically two videos, you did it for four bucks. I mean, like for four minutes of video, most of those videos, like those tip videos are about four, four minutes long. And, um, and, and Facebook likes when you caption them too, because a lot of people turn off the sound, you know, they're watching the video and they, they see the words at the bottom. So they know what you're saying. So it, it's just really smart, smart to caption your videos. Um, that, you know, that if there was one tip, it's caption, caption, caption. And then the um, other thing is to tag, tag, tag. <laughs> so when you're on YouTube and um, you're looking up information, just like anybody, it's like, how do I fix a light bulb? Or how do, you know, that's how people search. They use it to find information. They're, they're trying to solve a problem. So when you're creating a video, like a tip video, make it so a question like someone who was searching for the answer. So how do I buy a home? Uh, how do I sell a home? And then when you tag it, don't, you know, it used to be like how comma to comma sell comma. Don't do that. Make it a long tail phrase, how to sell a home in Las Vegas, how to sell a home in the Las Vegas area. You know, you want to make sure that you, because you're trying to capture the leads in your area that you want to specify exactly wh where you're wanting these leads to come from. So that's why I always tag mine with the words Ascension Parish. I must, and I say the words Ascension Parish so that way it's in the caption file. So it really helps with the SEO. Yeah, so you bring up a good point about, you know, finding your niche. Too many people sometimes like you're in Louisiana, you may say, hey, I want to sell real estate in Baton Rouge, the entire, you know, area of Baton Rouge, rather than, rather than do that, you focus on one specific area so that when they think of Ascension Parish, they think of the, of your real estate whisperer, right? And when they Google search it, when they mm -hmm. Google search it, you're the one that comes up. So um, you do one that's kind of a tip and then you do one that just, it's kind of fun, right? Just you, your personality, 
Right. I do one that's like a vlog. So basically I run through the, the parish. I, um, sometimes I'll talk to the, the owners or whatever. And I say, can I, can we come in here and vlog? And they'll say, sometimes they'll want me to interview them, which is fine. And other times they're like, yeah, you can come in here. And so I'll just say, this is a great store here in the area. Look kids. And they'll, sometimes they'll get on camera and they'll tell you the specials they have in their store. But I just try to find local businesses, local business people that are willing to get on camera and just, you know, I'm like running errands through the day. Like to this week I did one where I had to go to the veterinarian. My daughter wanted a smoothie and we went to the dollar store just basically to show the fact, feature the fact we have really great places to shop here and it's very convenient. I didn't have to leave the parish to go anywhere else for everything that I needed. And it helps the store owners too, because you know, that way, other people will be like, oh, I didn't even know they had that there, you know, or, oh, I, you know, they have a paint glass coming up. That would be really good for the kids. So it's, it's a good way to help the community in a whole too. So I guess what I'm hearing, like more lifestyle related videos, what it's like to live in Ascension mm -hmm. Parish, right? Because right. I think in real estate, yeah. that's what we sell more than anything. It's a lifestyle. Houses are houses, but people mm -hmm. want to know what it's like to live there, especially if they're relocating right. from a different area. Now the what fun else? ones I do, the little yeah, the omni more ones I do. Um yeah. I I do like once a month I do some kind of sketch and some of my my sellers will allow me to do like a comedy sketch type listing <laughs> video and some won't. But if they do allow me, I'll do like a sketch. And um I play all the characters so um no one can get offended and I don't have to worry about any bad acting cuz all the bad acting comes from me. And <laughs> So I play the real estate agent. I'll play the the person walking through the house. I'll play the annoying child. Uh, I play them all, and um, it's it's neat because it actually gets me to uh, be a little bit more creative and use a little bit more of my editing skills because it will look like I'm talking to myself. Many people don't realize that the characters in those are all me until like I tell them, I'm like, you realize that is me, right? Oh, I thought it was your friends. I'm like, oh no, that's all me. <laughs> Every single one of those people sitting at that table were me. <laughs> so let me just, I'm gonna try something new here, a new feature with Be Live. I'm gonna okay. try to share my screen and see if we can play one of your uh, videos that, listen folks, 30,000 views on Facebook, okay? Which is pretty viral. Um, I'm going to bring it up here. Okay, I think that's a good spot to put it. Now I'm sharing my screen. You can see that? I hope. I can see it on my end. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to play it. I hate when clients are like, so sorry. I'm okay. I'm Is is the volume okay? Yeah, it just seems like the little um the little uh clip might have been a little bouncy, you know, like it was just but whatever. I mean, it's a new feature. I don't. I don't. I really can't, can't see it from. Yeah, it's a little bit muffled. But I just wanted. To, I just wanted to share that quickly so that you guys can get a little taste. You can go to her. That's on her Facebook page. Uh, is it at Your Real Estate Whisperer? What's the short? Yeah, it's your real estate whisperer, and on YouTube as well, it's your real estate whisperer. It's a little. Um, I when I had the a year and a half ago, I had the little epiphany that I needed to change myself. I was like, I need to create a brand, and so my brand. I mean, I, it, it took a while, honestly, and um, I came up with your real estate whisperer, and I came up with the little ca catchphrase because I wanted my brand to, my you know, like a what it would be the sentence that would really be the brand and it's because you matter. So every time I, I um, you know, end a show, it's, I end it with, I tell you all this because you matter. Cause they really do matter to me. My clients mean a lot to me. 
And uh, I wanted that to convey with my my brand and my little catchphrase. So I love that. Say that again, because it's so important when building your brand to identify with what your core values are. And this is, this is what Christine is talking about here is that say it again. What what you want your clients to know? The, well, my catchphrase is because you matter. And, you know, I just wanted my my brand to emulate the words because you matter. And I feel like your real estate whisper because you matter are the two things that associate with each other. And, uh, and and my little logo says that too. I have the little hands holding a heart with a house inside it. I mean, all those things took, I mean, as, as simple as it all looks, it did take me a whole weekend of just sitting there thinking about this constantly, writing down words like, what do I want my brand to represent? What do I right. want people to get from my brand? And I want them to know it's because they matter. They matter to me. And every single person is important to me. And I try to treat them just like I have nobody else to worry about except for them. So, so I didn't play the whole video, but you guys need to go watch that video because it's hilarious. It's clients that we've all had. Like it's, it's so <laughs> the cliches and the things people say. It's hilarious. And that came out of a Facebook post. I just put it on Facebook. What are the worst expressions that people say? So I threw them all in as much as I could into one character. And um, I'm not making fun of anybody. It's always uh, an, an exaggeration of, of, of a person, you know, like there's no person that's really like this. And if you look at the outfit I'm wearing, it's actually my mother's. So I try to like the little character I'm acting, I'm acting kind of like my mom. <laughs> With the hair and everything, you know, the wig. <laughs> yeah, that, that is so great. So what's the message for people who, you know, I get this sometimes because, you know, I do, I just, I myself, I'm kind of silly, goofy sometimes, most of the time. And there's, there's a small segment of real estate agents that maybe have been in the business for a while who think, you know what, you're, you're a professional, you need to be serious and business-like all the time. Like, what's your message for those folks to say, you know, Comedy is not the answer. Um, I think that if you uh, are interested in being your authentic self, and I've and the, those are words that I've heard a thousand, if not a million times before, if you're not willing to be your authentic self, then no one's ever going to trust you. And it, how how painful and hard is it to throw on that professional hat where you're just you know watching every word all the time? And or just being yourself, how how more releasing and, and free is that where you can just be who you are and do your job and do it well? I mean, I may be goofy and silly, but I know how to get my job done and I know how to get my my clients a good deal. And, um, you know, some people are going to love me and some people are going to hate me. And if they hate me, I've saved them a lot of time and myself time by not even, we're not even introduced to one another because they've already watched my video and they've moved on to somebody else. So I've, I mean, I've really saved myself a lot of aggravation and I won't, you know, I won't have that issue again where someone will drag me through the mud because they, they're not gonna wanna work with someone like me because I'm a little too honest, <laughs> you know? And I'm goofy and I'm fun. And and it's it's such a great message for somebody who's watching right now to like, just be you, be authentic. Just like you said, like if you're goofy, then be goofy because people like people who are like themselves. So you're going to find clients that are fun and goofy and, and your whole business will be better rather than you get serious. And then you get that serious client who you, you know, like you said, that tracked you through the mud and you go home and you want to kick your dog because it's, yeah. you know, it's there's that me with the big giant wine glass where she's like drinking it. You know? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've seen that little uh, Jeff go around with the girl drinking the wine, <laughs> pouring it down her face because she's had such a bad day. You know, um, I just I never want to have that again. I actually have that in my memories where it has I, I'm drinking a beer and I'm like, this is the most deserved beer I've ever had. You know? I earned this. I earned it. Again. Never want to have to use that again. But um, I, I mean, I just think that anybody that is scared to get on video, just keep videoing yourself until you get comfortable in front of the camera. I started with my cell phone. I didn't have fancy equipment. Um, I, if there's any piece of advice I would give somebody for the sound quality, look, I have it right here because I use it all the time. 
um, cause I was just using it for my phone, but a lapel mic, they're yeah. very inexpensive and look, it hooks straight to my phone. You know, it's yeah. Lapel mic. They're, they're cheap. They're too inexpensive not to, to do. And look, they hook right to your phone. And then I, um, I, you know, I use that. Nobody, everybody forgets that they even have this feature. They're like, I, I don't have that on my cell phone. I'm like, yes, you do. So there's like on the Apple, it says voice memos. Just use the voice memos. And, um, you know, I keep all my clips in there for every, you know, every thing I do. It's all my clips. So I, um, I run that audio underneath my video clip and match it up. And then, so that way it's a clearer, less tinny, no, um, echoey sound. Yeah. So if you're doing a video walkthrough tour where you're walking through, definitely use the lapel mic, 100% use the lapel mic and then match up that audio with that video clip. And it's going to, you're going to see that it sounds a whole heck of a lot better than um, just using that good microphone. Cause I have a road mic, but it picks up every little sound, you know? So if, if you can, especially in a vacant house, because I don't do this. This is a good. This is a really great tip for those of you who are listening. So you you record your video on your phone, and at the same time, your voice recorder is also recording your voice. Is that correct? Um, um, I have a video camera now. Like I video can I use a video oh, camera okay. now. All right. And um, but I and I take the audio clip from my phone and lay it underneath the video clip, so that way the sound like I I can catch the sound bar. You know, you can line it up with the, the little thing, the little thing. That was professional. <laughs> you can line it up no, with the little, little thing. thing. Just was, line it up. Then, yeah. <laughs> if, you know, if you can match patterns up, you can match up the sound. Uh, it's not hard. It's not hard. <laughs> well, let's let's talk quick. Um, and this, we'll stay on probably till 1040, I think, because we've got a lot of good stuff we're talking about. Okay. Let's talk about um, equipment since we're on that, that topic, equipment not just hardware, but also software. Initially, when you started, like you said, you had your cell phone and webcam. What, what I, kind of webcam would you recommend? Well, I, <laughs> when I first started, I just used my cell phone and I used, um, yeah, that was it. Just my cell phone. I mean, I, and a tripod that was, that was completely it. And then over time I built up and the, the editing software I used was the free one that comes with Apple, which is called iMovie, which is still an excellent product. Don't feel like you have to run out and buy, you know, Final Cut Pro immediately until you start really building up um, on making videos. Um, the, then over time I built up and I got a good webcam. The one that I'm on right now is a Logitech 922. So if you do a lot of live streams, um, I suggest getting, I mean, these Logitechs are what, uh, less than a hundred bucks. They're yeah. so expensive and you can get them on Amazon. Um, you know, if you are a prime member, they're free shipping. So <laughs> just go ahead and get you a Logitech. Don't go with the camera that's on the computer. They're not, they're garbage. Get, the webcams are too cheap not to get them. So, um, and then I have just a handy cam cause I know a lot of people have a good like camera camera, but I don't understand the, you know, I just don't understand all the, how the white balance and the aperture and all, I just, that just blows my mind. So yeah. <laughs> I just want to point and shoot. So I have a 4k handy cam. It's a great handy cam. And then I got a road mic. They, the starting road mic is less than a hundred bucks. And it's a good road mic. I upgraded the road mic since then. Um, there's a there's a couple more up from there, so I got it another another one since then. But the lapel mic was probably the smartest thing. I actually got that from um, a a girl who um, works for the company. She had mentioned the fact that to do a lapel mic, her name is Jill Liebernight. Jill Liebernight, and she has an amazing channel too. You got to check her out. Um, Jill Liebernight. I can't remember her what her logo is but she well, we um, can tag it in the comments okay and um she uh d she's out of austin and uh her husband is in production and she is an actress too so hers are really really good <laughs> one day i'm gonna be like jill lieber night <laughs> well, that's a good point though because it's you know no matter how good you get it's always good to have you know just like business have a mentor so if you want to do video find somebody who's better than yourself and learn from them and ask them questions and i'm sure you've encountered this that 
just about anybody's willing to help, right? I mean, it's a it's a great community. You ask questions and you say, hey, I liked what you did there. How do you do that? You know, what, what's some of the other software that you use besides, um, let's talk about the, the editing for the videos. You said well, Final Cut Pro. Previous, yeah, if previously I used iMovie and then now I use Final Cut Pro. And, um, you know, it, it's very similar to iMovie. So if you started iMovie and you moved to Final Cut Pro, it's seamless, really. I mean, you just have a ton more features. Um, Whenever I have like the little animations that scroll at the bottom with my, you know, like one with the ebook or my um, website, that comes from a, a website called Videos, Videos at V I D D O. No, V V I D D Y O Z E dot com, Videos or Videos dot com. And those give me those little animations. Um, I think they have like a, a lifetime subscription. Uh, when I signed up, they had the lifetime subscription and I actually found it on Facebook. A Facebook feed ad was targeted towards me. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and it works. So I'm, I'm <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> and then um, I also uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We're no, I was just going to say with the with Final Cut Pro, is that Apple only Mac users or the cross-platform? Nope, that's just a Mac. That's a Mac pro program. But if you are on a Windows program and you're looking to upgrade, everybody says Premiere Pro is the way to go. Oh, I, I'm a poet and didn't even know it. Um, <laughs> Premiere pro, pro is the way to go. And um, I, I don't know much about it. I just know it has a lot of great features just like Final Cut Pro. Okay, and then I use I use one called Movavi Video Suite, which is cross platform. So regardless whether you, if you have Apple or Windows, it's there's Movavi, a Movavi thousand 8. different ones. Yeah, there's like Cam Camtiva or Camtiva. Like that was one that I heard about. Um, but uh, I do want to mention one thing. So when you do uh, videos on uh, for YouTube, not only is it important for you to do the tags, it's super important for your title. To be clear, do not capitalize every single letter in the title. I know you see that a lot on YouTube, but that's against YouTube's policy. They do not like that. Um, that's not they so YouTube best practices. They say do not do that. They do not like it. And then make a clear description using a lot of your tags that you put down here in the bottom. Try to thread that into this description. And then when you have your captions on top of that, that is when you get the magic of getting more ranked on Google. So those, those, all those things are important. But the last thing that's super important, especially if you want people to click on your video in YouTube, is to have a thumbnail that grabs people's attention. So when you use the same exact thumbnail on every single video, nobody knows from that thumbnail that it's a different video. They're like, oh, I already saw this one. Oh, I already saw this one. You have to... And of course, there's a branding aspect of it, but change the look of each thumbnail. Do not use the same template every single time and only put different words over to the right of what that video is about. Make it different. Make people want to engage it. Make them want to click on your video that your information is going to be good. And there's thousands of different softwares to make thumbnails. There's Canva.com. There's PicMonkey.com. Um, I found one, Pixlr, which is free, P-I-X-L-R.com. I found that one yesterday. L-E-R, yeah. L-E-R. Yep. So, I mean, there's thousands. I mean, like, you can do, you can do it. You don't have to have a million dollars in the bank to do it. You can do it. You just have to want to do it. So, do you use, to help you with the tagging, because that may be above the level of some folks who are just starting, but to help you with the tagging and the titles and the description, do you use VidIQ or TubeBuddy? To help <laughs> <I use> with <laughs> that? Okay, well, it's good because many of us do, and it's a great, not a I shortcut, do. but it's about working smarter and not trying to figure it out yourself. But just right. so explain, explain what it is so that they know. Okay, so TubeBuddy and VidIQ is a Chrome extension that a attaches to your um, YouTube page. And so when you start, you will say keyword research. When you go into TubeBuddy, you click the little icon, it says keyword research. And then you start typing in what you think might work. 
and then they'll give you suggestions of what works better. And they'll give you like a grade, like this is super high searched, but there isn't a lot of videos. So you're like, well, this is, that's the way to go. And um, it didn't click with me really until I had this one video and it's still to this day, it cracks me up. I have this one video on YouTube that has, um, I think just over 10,000 views and it grows about a hundred views a day on how to remove the smell of dog pee out of the carpet when selling your home. <laughs> and and my point of YouTube- Google's a lot, I would imagine, right? Uh, obviously, obviously <laughs> it is. And it's super simple to get out, so if you want to check that one video out, but YouTube is like a library. And when you put something on Facebook, Facebook loves it for three days and then the video just dies because there's no way to search it afterwards. Right. Once it's gone, it's gone. But on YouTube, it's there forever. And you can have videos that are four years old with very pertinent information that are continuously being watched. That that YouTube video of the dog pee was, is eight months old. When I first put it up, I had seven views in 14 days. So you just never know when that algorithm is gonna start picking up those keywords, the, your description and your title. So, um, and you can always tweak things over time when you learn them. I, I've tweaked some videos and some descriptions and some tags over time to get more views over, over a period of time. It works, it works. Well, and I, you can always update your thumbnails as well. Before, before I, discovered I discovered those two programs, programs two buddy, two buddy and IQ, IQ, it's like a guessing guess guess method. Guess and like, like, I'm sure you went through the same thing where it's like, I don't know what to freaking tag these videos. And you're just like, uh, uh, ascension real estate, uh, real estate. Uh, and then you just, will it work? Who knows? It's good to have a system that's smarter than you. That's just some geek figured out. That's much, you know, <laughs> with the analytics and all that good stuff to help us with the process. But uh, when I did start though, I'm going to say this is that, I actually started with the words or the title that I thought by putting it at the top of YouTube to see, you know, like, cause it'll give you a suggestion right after it. So that actually helped quite a bit. And I still use that method before I even start using the keyword research in TubeBuddy and vidIQ. I want to see which ones come up first. So I'm going to put this up here. Google search your video titles. Do you title them the same on YouTube and Facebook or do you do it differently? I do it differently because like I said, on Facebook, they go to die and I'm really kind of just targeting it towards Ascension Parish. So I use titles that would be more specific to Ascension Parish. Um, but when, when, I'm, when I'm doing it on YouTube, it's very specific for YouTube. Yep. And then, and then even though the videos may look different, there are slight changes from the video upload to YouTube than there is to Facebook. At the end of all my videos on YouTube, I have an end card that tells people to subscribe and to watch other videos. Um, I also thread it with an animation at the bottom, make sure you like, uh, subscribe. But then on Facebook, I do the little, little thumbs up buttons that say, make sure yeah. to like my business page, you know, and they float across the screen. And, you know, I, I do tailor each video different for each platform. Cause I think you need to know your audience for each platform and they're different. And there's some videos that are on YouTube that will never be on Facebook, <laughs> never be on Facebook. Never, ever, ever. Uh, excellent advice from a, uh, I, what is this, Joe's? Sin Sinona? Sinona. Sinona. Excellent Sinona. advice from an expert. Sinona. 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 But we're listening to the tech and tech schools and these fields are much more than you think. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, Joe. You. Yeah. Yeah. It is awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. And I like sharing what I know because no one showed me anything. And anybody who's, like, some of my videos, like you said, you know, have like over 30,000 views. And I mean, I've had agents call me from California, from Rhode Island, and these people become my friends. Right. And because I'm willing to share everything I know. I am an open book. I, I'm, I'm not hiding anything. If you want to sit down here and watch me do something from start to finish, you come in and sit down. And watch. I mean, it's not a secret. None of it's a secret. It's just work. And if you're willing to work and you want to do it, then do it. 
I mean, it's, it's not, it's not hard. It starts off very small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, especially I kind of, I've like almost become a kid to it. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed it so much. So, I mean, that's a good spot to kind of close on. Let's any closing words for those who want to be the future, your real estate whisperer, or just a whisper of whatever they do in life. Uh, what, what's your closing recommendations or just words of inspiration that you'd like to tell them, you know, when the going gets tough, what to do? Quit contemplating. Don't give two flying flips what other people think and just do it. Just do it. It doesn't matter what your mom thinks, your dad thinks, your cousin thinks. If you have it in your heart to do something, freaking do it. Don't listen to anybody else. It, it will all work out because you have a passion for it, period. Period, point, exclamation point, exclamation point. You heard it here first. Just do it. Who cares what they say? Don't give a flying flip about what they're going to say about it. Because you know what? Uh, a good friend of mine, Joe Sonona, says this. People are going to throw stones at the tree that has the most fruit. And they see you doing video. They see you being successful. They're going to be like, oh, you think you're a big video star? Who cares? Just do what you want to do. Just do it. And if you have any questions, please reach out to Christina. Uh, yep. On YouTube at Your Real Estate Whisperer on Facebook, the same, keeping the brands together. Uh, yep. Watch some of her videos. They're super hilarious. And we thank, thank you, you guys. And again, I thank you, Christina, for sharing just a little bit of what you know, because there's so much more we could talk about. I think we'll do a follow up interview at some point uh, just to go a, a little bit deeper for those who may want it. But if you know, if you want I, to, go ahead. I have an idea. And, and it's a, since do you it. have this screen, uh, right there. Why don't we show, cause there's people that have no idea even how to set up a channel. Why don't we do a, like almost like a tutorial of how to even start and set up a channel and then show them how to upload and tag here that, I mean, like that would be golden for someone that has never done it before. Yeah. So we'll set something up for that maybe in a week or so. If you want us to do a greater in-depth tutorial on YouTube, just, type Millenni who in the comments below you'll subscribe mm -hmm. to the show. We'll add you to a list and we'll let you know exactly when we're going to do that. And again, right. we're not on here to sell anything. I don't want you to subscribe to something that costs money. We just want to help others be great in real estate or That's whatever right. field you're in for that matter. Um, and again, thanks, Christina. No problem. Thank you so much for having me on. It was awesome. I had a great time. Me too. Take care, everybody. Don't be good. Be great. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero, J-Man Seminars.